So here are my plans to get better. Number one, elocution. I'm gonna try to speak more clearly and not pause and use filler words so much. So, um and like are very common, and uh, those are all very common filler words for me. So I'm gonna try and work on those to where I don't have so much of my conversation be those things. That's number one. Number two is I have I have purchased and got apps to help me figure out background noise reduction. That's another thing. So I'm gonna work on that too. But specifically the thing that I'm actually, this is like a bonus video. Um, my plan was to just do videos on games that I have, but I've had some, you know, bubbling interest in some of the games that I have are, have deluxe parts to them, and so, or are deluxe versions, and so I'm going to just show those off, so that if you're interested and you're curious about the difference between just retail versions and deluxe versions, you can make up your mind on which one you want. So. Timestamp. But I don't know if that's actually a timestamp because I haven't done these types of videos before, so I don't actually have a format for them. So I know that there's going to be a bunch of me rambling, but um, I don't know what else there's going to be. I don't know if I'm going to subdivide it into sections. So, timestamp. But once again, I, I'm not actually sure. So the first thing that I'm going to do in this series, the first game I'm going to show off is Mind Management, which oh, is a game I absolutely love. I love this game. It's designed by Jay Cormier and Sin Fu Ling, and it's got art by Matt Kent, Matt Kent, who is actually the artist of the graphic novel that this is based off of. It's published by Off the Page Games, which is the publishing company that Jay and Sin set up um, and then I think there's also some additional publication through Burnt Island Games who I know very well and um, so yeah this is a game for one to five players but I have the deluxe version and there is a big difference between the deluxe version and the retail version now specifically I know for sure that I said I was going to research this before I filmed it but Timestamp. But I don't actually think I've done that, so I'm just going to jump into this. So this is the deluxe version. I'm just going to kind of show you the things that I know for sure are deluxe-ified, specifically because I've played with the retail version and checked out the retail version at con conventions. I've seen it at Gen Con, and then I've played it at PAX Unplugged. So I know somewhat of what's different. So let's just start with showing you. I don't know if the retail version has this, but this game, and I can't tell how the glare is on this, this particular box has really beautiful um, spot UV spot, um, or spot UV, that shows like a skull where her face is if you kind of angle it the right way and look at it the right way. I don't know if you saw that, but believe me, it's there. Um, yeah, it's really gorgeous. Where her head is, there is a creepy skull. So let's jump into this. Probably the most notable change between the retail and the deluxe is this box right here. So in the retail version, there is a mechanic that's in both games called the shift system, and it is what auto-balances the game. Whichever side loses, it gets to open a new package, and it gives them a new power or a new character or a new ability, some new rule, some twist to the game that makes them have an advantage to where maybe the next time they'll win rather than the other side. So it's a it's an auto balancing system that adds in a lot more extra content. And I mean, even just the base game of mind management, I enjoy. But this adds so much more potential because it gives a lot of opportunity for additional gameplay variety. So in the retail version, this does not exist. Like this beautiful, massive box with all of this extra art on it, it does not exist at all. The shift boxes in the retail version are just little cardboard boxes with the, with the components and the extra cards and stuff like that inside. In the deluxe version, 
this massive, beautiful, I mean, first off, just like, it, this art is not for everyone. Like, there are some people I know for sure who do not like the art and were actually turned off to the game by it, but I love the art. I think it's fantastic. So, I mean, you get like four full spread pieces here. Um, and so this part is really nice because I don't know how well you can see this. I'll try to show this to you. I'm not at the point where I'm doing B-roll yet or top down. So all of the shift containers, all of the shift packages are nicely organized into game trays inserts. And if I like pop one out for you, it kind of pops in really nicely into this section and it has it numbered. It tells you which one it is, which matches on here. So it's really easy to put back. And these are really nice plastic inserts that keep everything nicely tucked and then pop back into the main thing. So this to me is probably the biggest box and visual update to the game. It's not cardboard boxes. It's not kind of crammed or packed neatly into the main box. It has its own organizational system with game trays and a lot more extra exclusive artwork on it. I think this is probably the most visually stunning addition to the deluxe part of mind management. So that's the first bit. The second bit is, um, there's some spoiler things here that I don't want you to look at, so I'm gonna put those off to the side. Um, another additional thing that's different is that in the retail version of the game, I'm pretty sure that this is just card stock. So this is the player screen that whoever is the recruiter, they hide behind. Um, and in the deluxe version of the game, this is actually cardboard um, instead of card stock or paper. Um, and the other thing that I like is that the recruiter, which I don't know how much you know about the actual gameplay, they have cards or features that they use to hide. And in this version of it, on the inside slip, there are actually, I don't, it's maybe hard to see, but there are plastic sleeves where you can insert everything that you need um, minus the board that you're writing on. And so it makes it very visually and spatially easy to manage because you can just slip the cards in and they don't have to sit somewhere on the table. So it's just, it's a, it's a component upgrade and then also an organizational upgrade because you're able to slot those into those sleeves. And then this is a nice heftier material. So that's number two that's different. Um, pretty much, I believe the board is pretty much the same. Um, you know, you've got the regular... Uh, thick cardboard board that separates it out into the sections. Um, whether you have the deluxe or the retail, I don't believe there's a difference here. Um, kind of the main thing that I actually wish was different is that the features face the recruiter, whereas I think it would have made more design sense for them to face the rogue agents because they're the ones who have to look at the features and figure them out whereas the recruiter knows what features they're going for and has their own little mini version of the map. So, but that's irregardless. Irregardless is actually not a word. Um, so I don't know why I said that. But regardless of my preference, I don't believe this is different. It might be a thicker cardboard, but it's still a cardboard um, map all the same. That doesn't really change. This is the... Um, this is the recruiter's personal board that they use. It's possible that in the retail version, this is also cardstock instead of cardboard. Um, but my gosh, I just, I absolutely love Matt Kent's artwork. He is just, I think this is one of the most visually distinct games that has come out in recent memory. Um, and he's just recently got the omnibus volume of this it's re and it's in print again, so I'm probably gonna order it. Now I'm not gonna show you everything in here because some of the pieces in here I actually have from the upgrades um, in the shift package. So I'm gonna only pull out some of these. Um, but specifically, for example, some of the components themselves have been upgraded. The other thing is this has a game trays insert, which I'm gonna show you using just this. I'm gonna hide that. So this has a game trays insert. I don't actually um, know. I don't think the retail version has a game trays insert. So if you're kind of an organizational 
freak like me and you want things to be nicely tucked away and you don't you know buy tackle boxes or plastic containers or endless baggies if you like things to be really neatly organized this box does it beautifully specifically because it nestles all of the components first and then the board lays on top of that all of the boards and they kind of they slot in those organizational tray ways to where they lock all the components in so they're not going to rustle around and then the larger shift box sits on top of all of that. So it really doesn't move at all. Um, but one thing that I know for sure is that um, these are like cardboard tokens. So th these are your note taking and confirmation system in the game. Whenever you are writing stuff uh, and you're, you know, you're asking the recruiter where they've been. You are writing notes on these little brain tokens that have a white side for theoretical and a green side for confirmed. And in the retail version of the game, these are cardboard. They have the same laminate or, you know, sheen on the outside to where they're receptive to dry erase markers, but they're cardboard. Um, and in this, you get nice, kind of heftier plastic chits and um, you know th they work really well with dry erase markers because they have to but they also have a bigger heft to them so um, and then a lot of the other components the the upgrade from retail to deluxe is simply cardboard and standees upgraded to wood so for example these step markers where you uh, where either you know it's always where the recruiter voluntarily mentions where they've been in order to get extra movement for their immortals, or it's where they have to admit where they've been because the rogue agents have successfully identified a feature that they've visited. And so in the retail version, these are going to be kind of white-rimmed um, cardboard tokens um, with a red interior. And in here, they're, they're very nicely cut. And, um, you know, they, they, they're thick, chunky wood tokens, and so they feel a lot nicer in your hands, and they look a lot nicer on the board whenever you're placing them. And then you've got your Mayhem tokens, which once again are white-rimmed. I, I, I think all of them are, I think all of the cardboard pieces are white-rimmed because they have the exterior outline, and then they have the actual artwork. And so once again, these mayhem tokens, which block both ray, rogue agents and recruiters, these are thick, chunky pieces of wood. Um, and just, again, nicer table presence. Now, I, I will say this, because I, I don't ever want to be the person who, like, actively pushes you to buy the nicer or more expensive version, because I, I kind of hate FOMO. Um... I mean, I participate in it, but I'm not really, at the end of the day, a fan. There is no, and I repeat, no, change to the actual core gameplay of mind management. It doesn't physically change. There are no add-ons that are special to the deluxe version that make it nicer, that improve extra variety in the gameplay. The shift system and the core game, it's all there, whether you have the retail or the deluxe. It is really just a visual upgrade and an organizational upgrade that you get when you get the deluxe version. And my preferences as a gamer means that I am likely to purchase it because of that. Um, I mean, I also, I, I should probably also caveat that I got this for free as a reviewer. Um, Jay reached out to me because he wanted someone to do a written review of it, which blew my mind because not anybody requests that specifically, but so I, I do want to like preface that I got this for free. I did not pay for it. However, that being said, if I played this myself at either type of copy and enjoyed it as much as I have, um, I've played this about eight or nine times now, um, about five times here with friends and family that I have and three times in Cleveland with Jesse and Alex. Um, which there's some gameplays up of that if you haven't ever seen this game in action. However, no matter what, if I didn't own the game and I purchased it after playing or purchased it prior to playing, this is probably the one I would have wanted to get because I visually, I love graphic novels um, and um, 
I think Matt Kent has done a fantastic job. Also, I met him at Gen Con, just happenstance. It had nothing to do with me reviewing this. It was just I happened to meet Matt Kent and play games with him, which was really, really fun. Um, but also, when I meet people and like them, I want to be a patron to what they do, you know, artistically or creatively. And so, no matter what, my preferences are I like things organized, I like things that are fancy, and I like, you know, giving to people that I care about. So for whatever reason, even if I hadn't have gotten this for free, I would have purchased this version of it. Just want to say that so that you don't think I'm like shilling anything. But moving on in the um, so in the retail version of the game, you have these. You, we don't have these. These are cardboard standees in the retail version, and in the, in the deluxe version, they are dual sided thick, chunky, wooden um, meeples or pieces. And so these are the rogue agents, and they each have, you know, a particular front face. I can't hold things right now. They have a particular front face and then a back face, which is kind of artistically I like because, it you know, it shows their exterior that they show to the world, and then it shows their psychically broken inside their head version. You know, she's like this tough, powerful woman here, but she's this small little girl holding, you know, her stuffed animal. And, you know, this guy is, you know, this really cool man, and then the world's burning on the inside of his head. So they're very thick. They're very chunky. Um, and then you have the immortals, which are kind of the bad guys that the recruiter controls. And once again, thick, chunky wooden pieces. They're very tactile. They're very satisfying to hold. And they, they give, they you know, they elevate and physically increase the volume or density of your table presence when you're playing the game, which I like a lot. So those are things that you'll get. Instead of, instead of cardboard standees, you'll get wooden miniatures or wooden tokens or whatever you want to call them. Um, and, you know, once again, you'll get these wooden pieces. I, these are the recruit tokens. This means... This is the objective that the recruiter is after. He wants to collect these around the map by going to the features that he is locked in on at the beginning. And the thing I like about these is that they kind of, the back side of them shows a silhouette of another face and the front side of them also shows a silhouette of a face. I just find these very satisfying. I, I think the production value on this game is just insane. And fully granted, I know that it's, it's almost like double the price, I think. I, I, I don't know the exact numbers, but I'm pretty sure the Deluxe is close to double what the price is of the retail, which is going to turn some people off for sure. Um, but, man, I beautiful art, beautiful pieces, um, and, and I think maybe this is you know one reason why they might have partnered with Burnt Island is... I think that so much of the instinct is for people to go, oh, plastic miniature, plastic miniature. That's what shows like a premium game. There are times when I am much more, very much more interested in beautiful wooden pieces than plastic pieces, specifically because, you know, plastic pieces take up a ton of, ton of space. Like my Bloodborne game takes up almost two Calax shelves on its own, which is just gnarly and crazy. But... Wooden pieces, when they're done right, feel so satisfying, and they elevate the game, and they, they allow for some really beautiful artwork. And Matt is a fantastic artist. So I think that's mostly all the pieces. Uh, th these are the mind slip tokens. This is how um, the recruiter can do their special moves. And so, you know, instead of cardboard tokens, these are nice wooden pieces. And I, I love the aesthetic, like almost cut out of the of, of the same piece in different versions or different views. So for example, this is a meeple that has a like excision of another meeple stylistically cutting it apart, which I really like. Um, and it, and this, the recruiter you know has the same thing and possibly even the footstep. So just the visual, the visual quality of this game to me is stellar, and it really upsells what you've got going on. And I don't know, it's, it's hard to really show you what's going on here, and maybe you can see it here. And I don't know how much of the retail version has this. Is all across here are double-layered, like double-printed sentences. 
um, which makes it kind of gibberish to be able to see. Um, and I, again, this is not going to show up on camera because I'm not a videographer like Jesse. I'm not talented in that aspect, and I don't have the equipment or the time to do so. But this is the like round tracker, and if you bring this over these letterings, it actually cancels out. Um, I'm trying to think out which one it cancels. It cancels out the red because this is a red filter, and so it makes the red printing blind and allows you to read the blue and so there's hidden messages all over this box there's hidden messages and there's hidden messages on the cards as well and there are some hidden messages that have a particular symbol in front of them and if you deduce where those are on the board on the components on the box if you're able to figure out where those are you can actually unlock additional content for the game which is just the designers for this outdid themselves. I think this is a beautiful product. I think it's a fantastic game. I think this is absolutely one of the best games of 2021, without a doubt. Um, but just the work that went into this deluxe version is sumptuous. It's fantastic. Um, again, you don't have to have it. It does not affect the gameplay. I think it increases the atmosphere and the satisfaction of playing the game based off of what you're looking at and what you're working with tactically or, or tactilely, physically. Um, aesthetically, it's an upgrade to me, but I, it's just such a solid product to begin with. So t I hope this helped. Um, there's probably things that I missed, almost certainly things that I've missed, but I hope that you've kind of seen that, you know, this is a very nice product. And if you haven't, if you didn't realize what I was doing prior to this, all of this um, nestles away really beautifully. Like for example, this the recruiter's board nestles in first, and then the game board comes in and locks away all the components from moving. And then after that, you can kind of get in your rules and your cover screen, and the cover screen locks in there actually. And then I put the rules on top of that because that's the last thing that doesn't need to nestle. And then after that, you have the rest of the box for this deluxe shift system organizational box. And then boom. Yeah, and it all packs away real nicely. It's beautiful outside. I don't know the box size and the dimensions of the retail version, but the deluxe is obviously a little bit bigger just because of the size of the shift system. Yeah, so that's mind management. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, I think I'm going to start doing Dune next. Timestamp.